Okay, so in this problem we're told the two masses shown in this figure are each initially 1.8 meters above the ground, and the massless, frictionless pulley is 4.8 meters above the ground. What maximum height does the lighter object reach after the system is released? Hint, first determine the acceleration of the lighter mass and then its velocity at the moment the heavier one hits the ground. This is its launch speed. Assume the mass doesn't hit the pulley, ignore the mass of the cord. So in this problem, we first want to draw what's going on. So uh, they give us a diagram here and we have two masses. We have this mass and this mass. I'm going to refer to this one as one and this one is 2, just to distinguish. Uh, and then we know both of the masses are 1.8 meters above the ground, and we know the pulley is 4.8 meters above the ground. And so we know what happens when this system is going to be released. We know that the heavier object is going to go down while the lighter object is going to go up. right? And this should be pretty intuitive since the this one's heavier. Obviously, it has a greater force pulling it down, uh, and so this one's going to pull it up. right? So the tension in these cables are going to pull it up. And so what we're trying to find is essentially uh, the point or like how far the lighter mass, which is one in this case, is above the ground, right, after this whole thing gets released. So that's what we're trying to find. And so uh, going off their hint, they say the first thing we should do is determine the acceleration of the lighter mass. So uh, we know that this block and this block are going to accelerate at the same speed because they're connected by this pulley here. So uh, we can basically just solve for the acceleration of this system here. And now how do we do that? So if you're ever given a pulley like this or a pulley system, you're going to want to do some equations where you sum the forces. So uh, first you want to draw the free body diagram acting on each of them. So we know we have mg going down right here, and I'm going to call it m1g since this is mass 1 we'll call it. And then this is M2G. And sorry about that notification at the top. I don't know how to get rid of that. Uh, but we have M1G uh, and then M2G for this mass. It's just the forces due to gravity. And then we also know we have tension in, e in each of these cords. And we'll call it T for tension. And so uh, these values T are going to be the exact same. And so uh, what we want to do is sum the forces for each of these, uh, each of these blocks. So starting for this block we have the sum of the forces equal m, uh, and it's m1, so it's m1 times a. So m1a equals the sum of the forces. Now, the way you want to do this is uh, positive when you sum up the forces uh, if it is in the direction it travels. So in this case, notice tension is upwards in the direction it travels. Therefore, when we sum them, it's positive. So you would do t uh, and then minus m1g. Uh, because M1G is opposite the way of motion, while T is the same way as motion. Now, we do the same thing for the other block, where you have M2A equals, and then you sum the forces for uh, this block here. Now, uh, notice this one's going to be going down, so M2G is now positive, and then it's minus T, uh, because this is opposite uh, the direction it's traveling, uh, because this one's going down. Now, what we can do is basically uh, solve for T with one of these equations, uh, plug it in and then allow us to solve for a and then we will have the acceleration of the system Which is uh, what they wanted us to find uh, beginning um, So I'm gonna move this to the other side here. So writing this here you would get T equals M1 a plus M1 G So all I did was move this over and then I just swapped them the sides um, And now we have that so I can plug this T value into this equation where you'll have M2 a equals m2g minus m1a plus m1g. So all I did was substitute this t uh, into here. So let me just check that real quick. Uh, yeah, should be good. Uh, and then now it's really just a matter of solving for a. So I would just write this out. So m2a equals m2g minus m1a plus m1g. Or sorry, minus m1g. Right, because minus goes on both of these terms. I'm just distributing it. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is add this M1A to the other side. So you'll have M1A plus M2A equals M2G minus M1G. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is factor out the M1, or sorry, the A from both of these terms and the G from both of these terms, where you would have A times M1 plus M2. 
multiplied by g times m2 minus m1. And so if we want a, you would just divide by both sides by this term. And yeah, then you have your a by itself with a formula where it's g times m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2. And cool, so now we have that. And it's really just a matter of plugging it in to solve for the acceleration. So we have a, or the acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant, 9.8. And then you have m2 minus m1, where uh, m2 is 3.6 and the other one is 2.2. And then you just add them up. So 3.6 plus 2.2. And now cool. So uh, go ahead and perform this calculation. So 3.6 minus 2.2 divided by 3.6 plus 2.2. You're going to get that it equals to 2 point, 2 point, about 2.4. So 2.366 we'll say. Uh, it's acceleration, so meters per second squared. Um, and yeah, so that's your acceleration here. And that's what they wanted us to find in the beginning. So uh, that's going to be necessary to solve this. So let me write this just here like this. And cool. So now this is where the problem gets a little tricky. Uh, and we're going to use kinematics to actually solve for this second part. So uh, what we're trying to find here is uh, basically how far this block is going to go upward. So this distance here. So essentially from this starting spot, it's going to go up. And we want to use kinematics to actually solve for that. So uh, the way it works is in two separate scenarios. And the way I always like to start my kinematic problem is to write my given out and then all my variables. So uh, the main five variables in kinematics are these right here. And we're going to use these in order to actually solve. So uh, what we need to solve for is this v value right here. So you'll see why we do it in a second, but we need to find what this velocity value is. And so uh, another thing you've got to realize is in this kinematic, uh, whenever you do kinematics, you choose an interval to solve it. So I know that this block here is going to go down 1.8 meters, which is going to cause this block to go uh, 1.8 meters too. And then at that point, the tension in the cable uh, is not, not going to exist anymore. Uh, and that's because this block is hitting the ground, so there's no tension uh, anymore. And so I'm going to set my interval in this case to be 1.8 meters for the delta y. Uh, and then just the rest of that I'm going to model after it. So the velocity I'm trying to find after this block is going to go up 1.8 meters. And now this, uh, this distance it increases isn't going to be uh, how high it goes because it's going to go up a little bit higher. Uh, as a result of gravity, right? So it's still going to be accelerating even though there's no tension. And that is what we're trying to find, how high it gets. But after that point, it would just fall back down. But we want to find the highest point. So we need its velocity at the end of this 1.8 meter interval as a result of this falling. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but we know at the beginning of this interval, right, we're choosing from here to here. This is where it starts. So we know its initial velocity is just zero. Uh, we know its acceleration is what we just found in the last problem. So it's, it's going to accelerate at this speed as a result of that. And then the time we don't know, but we really don't need. And you should notice we have three kinematic variables, meaning we can solve for our velocity here just using one of the equations. Uh, the equation I'm going to use here is v equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta y. Uh, the reason I'm choosing this is because we have all the variables except for v, so we can actually solve. Uh, notice the initial velocity is zero, so you really have v equals, uh, this goes away, and then you just square it. So to get rid of the square, you would just square it both sides. So you have 2a delta y. And yeah, so it's just a matter of plugging it in. So 2 times your acceleration here is 2.366 times your delta y, which is 1.8 meters. And then, yeah, so plug this in. I'll go ahead and do it. So you have the square root of 2 times 2 point. I'm actually going to use the exact value here. Uh, multiply by 1.8. So just plugging that in, you will get V, or your velocity, is 2.918 meters per second. And so this is what they talk about when they want you to find, uh, they say, uh, 
and then its velocity the moment the heavier one hits the ground. So that's zero, right? So it's launch speed. So this actually isn't what they're referring to. They're basically just talking about zero, but this is going to be, or actually it is, sorry, I messed up there. When it hits the ground is after this 1.8 meters occur, right? So that's basically its velocity or its launch speed uh, because the tension is going to go to zero. So when this block is down there, that's what they want you to find, right? So when this block is at the bottom, we're trying to find the speed right here because that's where the block, this block will be. And that's what we just found, right? At the end of that 1.8 meter interval, uh, that's your velocity. And so now that we have that, it's just a matter of finding, uh, using another kinematic equation to find how high it's going to go. So given, and then in this case, let's just write out our variables again for a new interval, and then t. Um, so notice the initial velocity of this interval is the end of this interval, because we're just starting here, and we're seeing how high it goes. So what we want to find here is the delta y because that's the change in the height or how high it's going to travel. And with that, we can actually uh, know how high it went rel relative to the ground. And so we know the initial velocity at this interval is 2.918. So let's write that in. So 2.918 meters per second, that's going to be the speed at the beginning of the interval which we chose, which was after this 1.8 meters. Um, and then the final velocity, you should know at whenever something reaches its height and it's like traveling in the air, if it's kinematics or anything else, uh, its velocity at that max point is zero. So at the end of our interval, it's zero meters per second because uh, that's where it reaches its max height. And that's what we're trying to find. And then the acceleration in this case, now that the tension is gone, uh, the thing that's stopping us is gravity now. So we don't have this acceleration anymore. We have gravity. So minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, the negative just indicates it's opposite to the direction it's actually traveling, meaning it's slowing down. Uh, and then 9.8 because uh, gravity is now acting on it. And so the acceleration due to gravity, uh, that's why A is that value. Uh, and then again, T, we don't know, but we don't really need. Uh, and we have three kinematic variables, so it's just a matter of solving now. But we're going to use the same exact equation. So you should know your kinematic equations by now. Uh, we're using this one just because all the variables fit well. Um, but yeah, so plugging the stuff in, notice V is zero, zero squared is still zero. So it's zero equals 2.918 squared plus two times minus 9.8 times delta Y. Moving this to the other side, you have minus 2.918 squared equals uh, two times minus 9.8 delta Y. Uh, you would divide now. So we're just doing basic algebra here and you'll have your delta y by itself. So notice your negative signs are gonna cancel and you're gonna get 2.918 squared. Or actually, I'm gonna use the exact value. Uh, and then you're dividing by two times 9.8. And so when you do this, you're gonna get 0.4344 meters. This will be your change in the y. So keep in mind what we just found on the drawing here. We found the change in the height relative from here to its maximum point. So this distance now is points, whatever we just found, 0.434. Did I say 4.4? Four, four? What did I say? Yeah, it's actually 4.5. Sorry about that. 4.5. Uh, but yeah, so 4.5. And then it's going to be meters. And so what they're wanting us to find is uh, the maximum height does it reach after the system's closed. So we know it's going to be 1.8 meters off the ground initially. It's going to travel 1.8 meters when this thing goes to the ground, and then another 0. Uh, 0.4, 3, 4, 5 meters above that. So the maximum height it's going to reach is just those values added up. 1.8 plus 1.8 plus 0. 0.4, 3, 4, 5. So if you added those up, you would get 4.034 meters. So we'll just say four point, it's basically four meters. Uh, you can round whoever you'd like. I'll just choose it to be that though. So just do it however your teacher wants you to. Uh, but yeah, so it starts 1.8 meters above where it's, uh, or it starts 1.8 meters above the ground, travels 1.8 meters when this block here goes to the ground. And then as a result of uh, just its velocity there, it's gonna travel a little bit more from this acceleration as a result of this block falling. So we just added them up. 
and it's gonna be four meters you can say above the ground is how high it's gonna go so write it however you like uh, but yeah so hopefully you understood that uh, we had or just a basic breakdown of what we did we had to solve for the acceleration first uh, and then we just use some kinematics to break it down a bit more to find how high it actually goes um, but yeah so hopefully you understood this video uh, this right here is going to be your answer, and hopefully you uh, found this useful.